Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to episode number 80 of Bob and Chad Show. Um, we're excited to be here. It was a great weekend. Uh, everybody yeah, finally got some decent weather, so a lot of racetracks raced. And and uh, so hopefully you guys all have a lot of questions, and we'll be able to, well, hopefully we'll be able to answer them or give you some ideas, our input or whatever. So what's new and exciting at Weir's Machine today, Chad? Oh, we're uh, we're plugging away. Finally got a race night here in at the local track, and uh, Stevie went out, did pretty good. Got to watch him, so got an asphalt race under my belt for the season, and we're getting ready for uh, the Memorial Day weekend here. We got a big three-day deal at uh, Deer Creek, so we'll be out there uh, doing factory support out there, and testing some new stuff and, and hanging out excited to get back to deer creek they always put on a good show uh, as you know how many days 77 days to the harris clash at deer creek and i can't wait man that awesome. I, I look so forward to going up there for that deal and, and deer creek th those guys do such an awesome job and um, they had like 160 cars for their weekly show last weekend as somebody told me there was yeah. a lot of cars crazy uh, so it was pretty cool. I mean, they had two A features in the in the B mods. Yeah, yeah, it was a heck of a yeah, field. That, that's unreal. So yeah, those guys just do an awesome job. I mean, it's, it's such a treat to go up there, and they treat you with such respect, and, and they and they bust their butt to make sure you've got such an ideal racetrack. And I I could go on and on and on about them for the rest of the hour. So I brought a couple widgets with. Awesome. I don't know if you've seen the post today, but we finally got our, our 9010 kits for putting the the pull bar shock next to the pull bar. So okay. that goes between the rear end brackets and has a swivel. And this one clamps on the tube, whether it's an inch and a quarter or inch or one inch tube. And then that'll mount the shock right in line next door. So we got them up ready to rock now in one inch and inch and a quarter. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good deal. Then they set the ball joint. We got this new ball joint tool. I don't know how much it supplies the mod, our mod crowd, but our late model crowd. So we made an adapter to go on our measuring plates. If you run a fabricated lower control arm, that just slips over and then your ball joint ring would fit on there. And then you can measure control arm links with your inner heim, your three quarter heim mm. or five eighths heim there. And then you could set that control arm to the right length if you were running a, you know, a fabricated control arm. Oh, that's pretty cool. Scott says good evening. Well, it's good evening, Scott. We're uh, like I said, we're uh, excited to be here. I always look forward to these deals and, and uh, get to talk to a bunch of old buddies and and see what's been going on. Looks like we're finally getting some nice weather. Yeah, and it looks like when well, I looked at the forecast all the way through next week, uh, uh, they had the 10-day forecast, which I think covers up to next Monday or Tuesday or whatever. And, and it looks like, <coughs> excuse me, looks like for the first time in as long as I can remember that Memorial Day doesn't show any rain. Yeah. Usually that weekend has some rain. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be kind of nice. We'll get a lot of racing in this weekend. That'll be awesome. Yeah, that'll be awesome. They've got a big special coming up, Benton County Speedway at Benton on uh, Monday night. It's, I think it pays like $4,400 to win. And uh, so looking forward to that, plan on going over to that show. Um, I, I only make it over there about twice a year for whenever they have some specials, but um, you know they, they do a good job. They've got a good program over there. And, and so it's always nice to see, and, and uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, there's, I know there's some stock car specials, you know, anymore. You can go anywhere under the world. It seems like for a stock car special, it pays five thousand to win. Uh, our old buddy Troy Jurovitz, he's up in Spencer Clay County Speedway in Spencer tonight, racing for uh, a show. Can you hear that noise in the background? Hang on. Oh. 
my humidifier decided to turn on. Oh, so he's running up there. They've got a big special up there tonight. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, all these specials are, I mean, it's, like I said, pretty, pretty cool. You know, yeah. He didn't have such good luck at Boone the other night, but I'll tell you what, Boone weekly show racing at Boone, especially in the stock car, well, it modifieds too. I mean, uh, all classes there. It, it's if you if you go to Boone and run good, you're 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 doing good. Um, Jason says thanks for all the help, and Dustin, evening guys, run an IMCA Sport Mod. Car has felt. Great lately, but is definitely lacking drive off the corner. Pull bar is 26 inches, but can't make it any longer. Any pointers to try? Um, thanks. Well, with the sport mods, you know, like I said, I've played a lot with the lead and trail, um, you know, running angle on that left rear and putting some lead in there. Uh, the old adage used to be that, when these cars weren't hiking up, people used to think lead was a bad thing. But now static lead, basically all it's doing is taking a little bit of dynamic uh, lead out of the car, dynamic steer out of the car. So, you know, instead of you running two and three quarters inch of steer, you, you can, you know, take it down to two and a quarter or two and a half or whatever, make the car tighter. I've had good luck with that. So I would give that a try. Dustin. Uh, Joel says, hi, guys. Uh, Larry Sanders, how does that new pull bar shock combination setup work? Well, the so you put the shock on next to the pull bar, which this clamp would go on the tube. Um, I got it here. I don't know how it would work on here, but if you go to our Facebook, we kind of had a picture of it uh, set up on there. So there's a little bracket that goes on the front tube, and then this piece here goes between the, the rear end brackets to, to mount the shock. So then you just you put that clamp on there where your shock has a, the right amount of stroke so you don't overextend it and get through the travel. Uh, most guys, I think, run a nine up top, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, nine-inch shock, so you got plenty of stroke. I know that we had a seven in that picture, and one guy commented, like, hey, how much stroke is left on that? And Obviously, you can tell by looking at the shock that it's not going to pull very far, but we just threw that together because that's the only shock we had here. But uh, you you then can adjust that front clamp to get that thing to where it has enough both directions and and then, uh, you know, use the shock that way instead of clamp to the chassis. Awesome. Um, Todd says he is confused. Please explain, explain to me what exactly what the slider does have a debate going um todd i'm not sure i understand you understand his question chad i think he's talking about left rear slider right having the slider and the shock separated instead of a coilover oh got it yeah well, I mean, the slider definitely, having the spring behind the housing, definitely when the indexing goes into effect, it indexes into the spring and it keeps the spring loaded, depending on how much, course, of course, how much preload you have in it, keeps the spring preloaded. Um, from what we have, I mean, that's the only way to run it is with that spring behind. Um, I don't know what else what else to actually tell him about this well it's about it's about the d cell right so with uh there's with them separated your shocks on the front so the shock has more control on the d cell side of the cage so as it's unindexing coming in the corner that front shock is kind of working against that in motion where when you put the shock on the back then it's kind of it it hurts d cell and makes the car free in is the problem there i believe yeah, if if you put them together behind the housing, it seems to make more traction. But like Chad said, the DXL, you know, you, you got to have something to keep the car relatively tight getting into the corner. So, like, say for example, if your car is notoriously tight, that would free it up. 
Um, and then it would give you definitely more traction up off the corner. Uh, Matthew, good evening, guys. Bob, could you help with a baseline setup information for my GRT USRA mod? I recently bought the car, and it's nothing close to what the setup sheet it came with had on it. The car currently is a lift arm car with a 225-pound spring, but I have the option to run the Terry Phillips-style pull bar. The car currently has a 550 left front spring and a 500 right front spring, uh, 275 16-inch left rear and a 175 13-inch on the right rear. I feel like the rear springs are too heavy. Um, yeah, that, that definitely, I wouldn't run anything over a 175 on the left rear. And most of the left rear stuff that we're doing is down in that 100, anywhere between 75 and 125 range. Our right rear is the 225. Um, it seems, it seems like with that 13-inch 175, the car is too soft. It lays over on the right rear too much. It's just kind of too lazy. Um, now, that when you stiffen that up, it's going to tighten it up. So you might end up having to take that 550 uh, and drop it to a 500 or a 525 because it's going to tighten the car up a little bit more. Um, best thing you could do tomorrow is give uh, Austin a call. And he could send you one of our, our GRT AMOD setup sheets that we use for our cars. And all, all he would need is your email address, and, and he could send that sheet right out to you. That will give you a good idea of what, you know, what we're running and, and kind of where we're at. Um, Chris, what's a good go-to adjustment to get the car to turn better in the middle of the corner? Mostly slick racetrack. Really having to wait on the car before I pick up the throttle. Um, three link Camaro clip. Um, well, it sounds to me like you probably need to tighten the car up a little bit more than what it is. Um, Maybe a little bit left, more left rear, you know, not knowing what you're, you're running for springs and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you're waiting on the car, that means that the left rear is not, not, not hooking up like it could. You might need more trailing arm angle on that left rear tire. Um, those kind of things would, would definitely help accelerate the, the, the traction. Um, those would be some, you know, some ideas. Um, you got any ideas, Chad? Well, I was I was confused. He was talking about turn better, but maybe he was talking about being too loose. But yeah, I, I said he wanted to turn, turn better, but he has to wait on the throttle, so they don't match. Yeah. So possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, car's Hard. tight. That's you know, yeah. Okay. Car's tight. Yeah, usually um, if it's rolling tight. I always point to the panner bar if it's like that rolling tight before you before you go to the fuel. If you're rolling tight, generally that's a roll center problem, I think. But yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, the other thing I would probably con contemplate doing is putting a softer left front spring in the car to kind of get the car to turn, getting into the corner. Takes it'll take a little bit of side bite out of the the right rear and make the car roll a little bit better. So those would be some things I would suggest, Chris. So Deer Creek, they got three days of the US MTS cars then this weekend? Yeah, I guess so. Awesome. Big week big weekend. They're trying to run them shows where they go to a track for I think three nights or two nights or so they don't have to travel so much, I think is Todd's plan, but that would be a great idea because I mean, the cost of fuel and, and all that stuff. And I know that's probably the only thing that I don't care for about the North Dakota tour is, you know, and, and you mean, you've been up there. I mean, you got two hours of driving every day, um, which, you know, it seems like when you can be at one racetrack for two days, I don't know. 
gives you a little bit more time to socialize with people and and uh, see what's going on. But that North Dakota tour still is a lot of fun. I mean, it, I haven't been on it for a couple of years. I know, I think Bobby's going to go this year uh, with McBurney's. Yeah, we're still up you here. You car count for that deal. Yeah, we're still trying to figure it out. I know with the commerce, we can't go into Canada, but. Yeah. Well, that's what I was just asking him today. I said, is your passport current? I said, I better check that. I <laughs> said, you better. Uh, um, Mike said, two nights in Grays Harbor, Washington, IMCA. Awesome. Um, Derek's got USA or BMOD with a quick change. I'm struggling with the heat rays that are really heavy. Have any setup advice? Left rear bar angle is 24 degrees. Right rear is around 15. Have J bar at zero on the pinion. And been playing with rake from five to six or five to eight inches. Car has no speed, it feels like. Well, you know, when it's really heavy like that, you know, of course, you know, like I said, not knowing what your springs and stuff are and what your setup is, but uh, I, you know, I, I think your treading arms look good. Um, that all sounds really great. Um, I would say I'd even go up higher, you know, because the old standard nine inch Ford, the pinion is an inch and a quarter above where the pinion, where the quick change is. So I wouldn't be afraid to go above that uh, an inch if the racetrack's super, super uh, tacky. Because it sounds like if you, if, if you have no speed, that's a pretty good indication that the car's just hooked up too much. Um, 175 left rear, 225 right rear. Yeah, that all sounds pretty good. I mean, I, I think that sounds pretty good, Derek. Uh, I would just, I think it just needs to be freed up a little bit more and, and that panard bar can definitely do that. Yeah, or chain, shorten the chain up a little bit in the heat race. We used to do that quite a bit. Yeah, that's another another good idea. Chad, can you export the Circle Track app to a PDF for keeping your 2023 notes in a binder? I know that they're working on importing data like from chassis builders to autofill setup sheets, but um I guess if you can go one way, you should be able to go the other way. So I'll make sure that they're uh, working on exporting that data to a printed copy, too, for a binder. Uh, Tim, tips on slick setup for a three-link B-Mod. Um, well, once again, you know, like I said, I, I work a lot with lead uh, on slick racetracks. You know, uh, We've got anywhere from 24 to 28 degrees of angle on our left rear. The right rear, you know, still, I wouldn't go below five or seven degrees on it. Uh, I think you'd be better off to put more, uh, more panard bar angle to get the car, to have some more side bite, but keep the, uh, keep a little bit of trailing arm angle in that right rear so that it, it has more corner speed. Um, that works really good. Where are you going this weekend? Um, well, I'm probably going to, Monday night, I'm going to go to Benton County, which is uh, Vinton, and I'll probably go Friday night to Marshalltown, and uh, Saturday kind of just depends on how Saturday goes. If it looks like it's a good fishing day, I might go fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, problem with going on Saturday is everybody else has that same bright idea. So I don't know what this. Um, so I don't know. Probably go to Boone. I haven't been to Boone. I think I've actually only been to Boone a couple times, come to think about it. So. Um, Bill, camber caster on a sport mod to make the car pull more to the left. <clears throat> well, 
Depending on what you got for spindles, which I would imagine, you know, Bill, you just have to say if, if you got three piece spindles or if you've got the one piece uh, pinnacle spindle. Um, the one piece pinnacle spindle, you know, we you could put a little less caster in the left front, a little more caster in the right front. That's going to make it pull pull more to the left. Um, you know, five degrees. I've never really went much more than five degrees on the right front with a pinno, and it's six degrees on uh, uh, the three-piece uh, three spindle. It's kind of what I've always worked worked with. Uh, Tim says, does anyone offer a cheat sheet for setup tips? Um, well, that would be the Circle Track app. Yep. Yeah, we have a tuning feature in the app that basically you punch in what you race, whether it's a stock car, modified, late model, or B mod, and then you pick your condition, loose, loose in, loose middle, loose off, gives you the tight option for tight in, tight middle, tight off, and then it gives you a list of recommendations that most of them came from Bob and, and a couple other chassis builders and me that kind of threw all of our eggs in one basket and and put some stuff down there. Uh, we're probably going to get a little bit more technical on there as we move forward and guys tell us what they want. We've had requests for what load changes do and some other things, and we uh, <clears throat> can get a little bit more technical with the four-link stuff and the and the two-link stuff. So we're, like I said multiple times, that app is just going to be an evolution, you know, from here on out of things that we want to do with it or can do with it and constantly update it and, and make it better and and basically help you win races so and where can they purchase that circle track app that's at? circle track app.com is the website so um they just launched a video on the the circle track app facebook on how to go through the whole process of buying it so if you go to the social media page watch that video uh not sure if it's on the youtube on the weirs machine youtube but Anyway, the Circle Track app website kind of gives a breakdown. You go there, you purchase your subscription, and then you download it from the the Play Store uh, and get it on your device. And then you go to the Help button to create your team, put in your email, and you make a password and and uh, put in the number you get when you purchase it. And and then you just start filling out the data. So it's got, I think it's 58 pages of things that you can input into there. So it's just a, a wealth of knowledge at your fingertips for your phone. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty handy little tool. I know we got a modified customer that he uses that weekly. I mean, he's uh, really enjoys having it and, and it offers a lot of tips and stuff. And, and I know he, he's complimented or commented numerous times to me how, how much information it has. I sent one more gadget with me too. It's not going to be real easy to show, but they did a video on the on the stagger stick. So this is a fancy fancy stagger stick. So telescoping, and then it's auto calculating. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. You measure your first tire, and then hit the button, and it stores that. And then you measure your second tire. And it stores that and then you're still live in the middle so the cool part is like you could measure a right rear and then if you have three left rears you can measure all three of them because you're live in the middle and then if you like that last one then you would hit that and it would save that and then that's what you could go so it saves it and then you can go to your notebook and write that down what you what you had so just a really cool tool uh from the ultra force line of stuff and it comes with a, either a flat end or a roller end, so pretty sweet tool. Awesome. I mean, if you have trouble with math. It's yeah. really quick math. There you go. It's pretty quick math. As you get advanced in years, the more of that stuff that's simple is better. Uh, Jeffrey's got a different ideas instant tight on the throttle pick mid corner thrust angle only multiplies how bad yeah instant tights pull bar or something 
Not sure what kind of car that is, but. Yeah. Uh, I think he's given us suggestions for what we were talking about with the guy that was tight in the middle of the corner. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yep. A lacking side but a dry slick A mod. Would a 275 be a good change on 200 right now? If so, what should I expect running that stiff? Well, I've tried all those stiff springs, and I've not really had, you know, like you go to Deer Creek or some super fast racetrack, a, a real stiff right rear may work really well, especially to qualify with. Um, has some good ideas. A 200-pound spring right now, we're at a 225, and we've got some guys that run a 250, but the majority of all of our customers are at a 225. Um, when we've tried the stiff spring stuff, that seems to work good. It definitely gives you more side bite, but I've always felt that it hurt traction up off the corner. And so what I, you know, what we gained by side bite, I didn't think we gained enough traction or we lost more traction than we gained side bite. So we went a different route and, and you know, and went stiffer on the left front to keep the side bite in the car with a softer spring. And that seems to work pretty well. Um, Russ, I know a lot of replacement lower A-frames are bad out of the box. Where exactly are they usually out of spec? Well, there's a group of A-frames out there that somehow or another they've got more bend in them as far as like when you, where the bushings are, if you run a rod through the bushings and then a straight edge out to the ball joint, the ball joint will actually be further back or closer to the rear. And what happens then in like IMCA racing where they've got that 18 and a half inch measurement, you know, if they measure that with that A-frame on there, you can actually get in trouble because your measurement is too short. The other thing that happens is now you, you now you put those on and say your your car was built for a true Chevelle A frame like the good ones that are made. Um, then all of a sudden your spring pocket's not in the right place, so it, it, it kind of puts a little bit of a bind in the spring itself, and so it's just kind of a you know it, it's just not a great part. Uh, you can buy them. They're they're real affordable, um, but they're they're not going to give you the correct geometry that you need to have. But that's where they're where they're out of spec is where the ball joint's actually located. What brand are you buying? Uh, we buy the ones from Argo. And then you do a bunch of work to them. You you'll sell them yeah. in a rock, right? To anybody, right? Yeah, yeah. Our stuff is all ready to go. We put uh, bushings, you know, the 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 plastic with the steel insert bushing in them, or neoprene, whatever you call it. And then the, the A frames are true. You know, we check the ball joint measurement to make sure that the ball joint measurement is in line. We put the shock mount on it. We put the uh, collar on there for the um, hollow lower ball joint. And we ship them that way. And we did have a problem with some of those A-frames. The spring didn't sit in there flat. So in other words, like a certain spring rates, like a 600-pound spring might actually be too wide for the A-frame. So what we actually did is uh, we had a, 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 a piece made where we could actually press that A-frame and stretch that out so that the A-frame fits in there or the spring fits in there without any bind. And it's, people don't understand how important, I mean, I know those A-frames are expensive, but man, it's so important to, um, and, and, and keeping up with, you know, like using that tool that you've got for checking the lower A-frame, I mean, 
you know, a rough racetrack, you can bend that outer lip up in a heartbeat and not hit anything. And that throws the car out of whack. It's, it's pretty important. For sure. Yeah, I wish there was a more affordable part out there, but it, there isn't. Not to have it right. Not to be that guy, but I think the fabricated ones are less money, ain't they? Oh, they are. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't have to deal with it. Yeah, no doubt. They they, they definitely are. Some things in racing, I have come to the conclusion that they don't need to make sense. It's just the way it is. Because if we tried to make sense out of some of the rules that and I understand where the intent of a lot of these rules come from. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't want to get on a, a deal about that because, you know, it's, it still has to look like, you know, kind of a, a, a stock factory type deal. And I'm not complaining about anything like that. That's not the case whatsoever. Yeah, Chris says, get Brett to let us run those fabric fabricated ones on IMCA. Um, you, might, you might be watching, so. Well, and the problem, you know, and, and for where those guys come from, the, the problem that you run into with the fabricated one is if, if, if you bought yours and we knew it's right, but with a fabricated one, you can also do more fabrication to it to do other things to the car that would make speed and so it, it's kind of a, you know, some of these rules we have to have to keep ourselves from trying too much trick stuff. Yeah, since we started building them A-frames, I've noticed that, like, if a car is built a little bit different, then the spring cup is a little bit different. And there are some variables with fabricated ones that, you know, I mean, just like what you're doing to that stock one, you know, making sure it's true, making sure it's lined up. But from manufacturer A to us to the other men, you know, there's about probably seven, eight people making lower control arms. And I don't know if any one of them, the two are the same, but. Right. Um, what is the measurement on a metric lower A-frame at the outer lip so I can check to see if mine's been up? You know, the Cheval is five and a half inches. I don't know what the metric one is, and, and I apologize, Jeff. I, I should know that, but I've measured enough Chevelle ones over my lifetime that I kind of remember that one, but I've just not uh, uh, measured enough metric ones to really actually know. So hopefully somebody will be listening here and, and they can give us that measurement. Maybe Paul at, at b and B's listening or watching, and maybe he can kind of chime in here and, and tell us what that measurement is. Uh, I know those guys are, uh, well, Chris, I could be wrong. Maybe it is five. I don't think it's five and a half. I thought it was five and a half. I could be wrong. Uh, I'll have to check. Uh, that's something I'll just have to check out. I thought it was five and a half. But. Again, that's the thing where you need to buy a couple of them and get them measurements and then you know, like we make that lower checker that goes on the car, so it snaps over the bolt head, and then you can reference the the ball joint ring and actually have a number to write down, whether it's four inches, five inches, whatever it is. It it gives you an on-the-car reference point with a good A-frame. So if you buy new ones, whether it's a Chevelle or a metric, then you can document that number and have it in your notebook. So if you hit the inside tractor tire, you can put that lower checker on there real quick and get that measurement. And know if you need to work on it well i'm going to try to text to find that out so give me a minute here you can just keep talking there chad jeff is asking if circle track has that info i don't know we don't have the if you're talking about the control arm i assume that's what you're talking about control arm info yeah. We don't document any of that in the app. That's kind of up to you to to put your numbers into there. Uh, 
Yeah, no, that's for sure. Um, let's see here. Uh, Don. Don. Uh, hit a hole in the racetrack. Frame bottomed out bad. Chased it up the racetrack. Bad hit. Does a guy put turns in the left front or up on the spring weight? Thanks, guys, for the tech information. Eight-inch ride height Chevelle clip. Um, kind of depends on the situation, you know. I mean, if it's a, if it's a situation where it's bottoming out, slamming down hard constantly, then that's going to tell you that you probably need to stiffen the spring rate up, go up on spring. If it's just the frame is just getting in the dirt ever so slightly and and once in a while, and it's only like in a heat race where the racetrack's super fast, uh, I'd put a couple turns in the right front uh, and raise that corner of the car up for that particular situation um, you know, or for that particular track. Uh, Steve says, heads up to everyone. Check your rear rotors for cracks. Quite a few folks have found rotors cracked in the last couple of weeks. You know, and, and, and that's probably not a bad idea. Um, and in fact, come to think about it, Steve, now that you mentioned that, I did see Austin shipping out a pair of rotor, rear rotors today. So evidently somebody must have run into that situation, um, you know, with the heat and then sit over the winter. And then, you know, what's, what's happening now is there's a shortage of some of the brake pads that people are normally running. So what's happening is, is we're having to go to uh, more aggressive pads or a different brand of pad. And, of course, once you switch pads on rotors and change the heat temperature, I think it can, you know, can damage the rotor itself, too. So, yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, check your rear rotors for cracks because that's, you know, something that's very possible. Uh, USRA BMOD bought a load stick from Chad at Jamboree last fall. Is there a baseline for the left and right? My right side is at 1450, a three inch number of load. Or could you explain what more or less load would do? Um, 1450 on a BMOD, that's a pretty common number on a Chevelle front end. That That's our numbers are right right there on that right front. Um, I couldn't tell you the left front number. Be, I know we've got a left front number because we load stick uh, one of the B mods there a couple, three weeks ago, but I never actually asked them what that number was. Um, you know, I'll let you talk about the rest of it, Chad. Yeah, I mean, the load stick is just your notebook for for – putting all that number in there you need to be careful when you're talking about different loads different cars but i don't know uh i actually don't even know any data people don't tell me anything anymore because they don't they know we talk to too many people so bob's bob's probably pretty close on that you know 1350 to 1500 i would say is probably the range there shock mounts vary so much you know you can tune that bottom number that three inch number with different springs pretty easy too that's what we've learned with the stick is when you have three, four, five different spring manufacturers and you put the stick on there, you get different numbers with each spring, how they coil bind and how they, how they run through travel. Um, you know, so tuning that down number is probably more important than tuning your ride height number, but it's kind of a balancing act between the two. Yeah, I would agree. Um, you know, a little less load is, is just going to make that corner feel a little bit softer um, you know, and a little more load is going to make that corner feel a little bit stiffer um, in that sense. Um, it's basically putting, you know, the old adage is technically putting wedge or taking wedge out of the car is what it's doing. Um, anyway, the number for the lower control arm is five and a quarter on a Chevelle. I just got that text that it's five and a quarter uh, on that outer tip to the Chevelle. I still don't have an actual number on the uh, the, metric. Uh, the the metric one. My metric guy's racing in Spencer tonight, so texting him would probably be a waste of time. Uh, 
Yes, Jeff, the app has a, a measurement section where you would put your, so if you use the lower checker or any weird measurement that we don't give you the option to put it in there, you have the measurements feature for each chassis that you set up. So you would put in your whatever lower control arm reference for left front, right front with our tool on the ground, however you want to document that. So in the event of a altercation, you can reference that number quickly in the app. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, uh, there's some there's so much information you can put in that thing and have it it's so easy to access. It's just unreal. And the thing of it is, is you know, some people say there's so much information that's overwhelming. Well, it's only overwhelming if you allow it to be. Um, you know, you don't have to use every inch of that database. I mean, you can use the stuff that's pertinent to yourself and then add as you go, so to speak. I mean, right. you know, the ideal deal would be this would be January and you bought the app and you had nothing else to do but put information in it. Um, you know, we're this type of deal. Uh, Ryan wants to know what app we're talking about. It's uh, the Circle Track app. So we, we developed a, an app for basically all your measurements and, and setups and stuff. Uh, that you know is available in your phone you enter in your data there's a tuning page it's you can check it out at circletrackapp.com it goes through it and there's a a video on the facebook page on how to do it how to download it so just a wealth of information and tuning you know whatever kind of car you got ryan it'll it'll help you with your you know at the racetrack and you can sometimes run out of ideas of what to change so just check out the website circletrackapp.com uh, Brandon says uh, he's the one that took these measurements for me. He says left front load at one inch. We are at 850 to 900 pounds. But we didn't check it at more than that because very seldom it actually gets more than that one inch of load. It's more um, unload than it's load. Um, let's see here. How do panard bar angle affect the car? Move the frame side or the rear end side more often. Have heard one side is more aggressive than the other. Um, moving it on the rear end is definitely more aggressive. Um, I very seldom ever move it on the frame. Uh, we've kind of got our frame measurement where I want it to be uh, with, uh, with it at zero. You know, I think we're at seven inches of angle is what we've got, or seven inches of uh, rate in that panard bar. And then uh, if the racetrack goes real dry slick, we'll go down a half an inch. And then I, that's all I ever adjust on it. Uh, sometimes, depending on the racetrack, if we feel like we're needing a little bit more side bite, we'll actually shorten the panard bar one turn, which is an eighth of an inch, and move the rear end uh, to the left of the car. That seems to sometimes get us a little bit of side bite to the point where we need a real minor adjustment that's just, you know, and you would think of an eighth of an inch wouldn't be a big deal, but you definitely can, the driver will be able to tell you that he can tell the difference with an eighth of an inch move to the left. It definitely makes a difference. Uh, so, but in answer to your question, moving it on the rear end is much more aggressive. Uh, Jason, I'm poor in converting an A mod to a B mod. I need to reuse my bird cages. Can I weld them to the axle tube, or what's the best way to lock them up? Uh, please do. Please do not weld them. They have bearings in them. Um, I don't know whose cages are on there. If it, if the A mod does have our cages, we have a simple clamp. You could pull all the pieces off that bearing cage, slip the the housing off, and and bolt them plates and shock mounts right back to it for, um, God, I think them clamps are like 140 bucks. So, but don't, don't weld that stuff to the axle. You'll regret that later in life. Uh, for sure. That's going to be a mess. So I wouldn't do that. If you do have our stuff, give us a call. Otherwise we probably got some scratch and dent stuff on the, the homeboy shelf. We can check that too tomorrow. If you give us a call, sometimes occasionally we got some stuff that gets lasered upside down backwards and sideways. And we like to give deals out on that stuff. So 
um, and help out race teams. And, you know, some of the stuff doesn't really matter. It's just a, a appealing or whatever, you know, scratched or things like that. So give us a call. Maybe we can dial you in with the, some stuff off the homeboy or at least convert that with just a clamp if it is our stuff. Yeah. But do not weld that cage yeah, in place. Don't. Yeah, don't weld those cages. You that that would be just a mess. You will you will definitely wish you wouldn't have done that. But yeah, Jason, I'd give Chad a call tomorrow and and see what they've got. That's that's a definitely a good idea. Um, I know it's. I understand you're trying to save a couple bucks, but that'll be a way you'll end up re regretting that savings. UMP modified, tight on entry, early when it's heavy, slick, it's good. What would help get the car to turn in on a heavy racetrack? Um, half inch wheel spacer on the right rear. Uh, what's happening is, is the reason it's not turning in is because it's getting on the right rear too much. Uh, raise the J bar up. Uh, definitely that would help too. Uh, soften the left front spring that would take some side bite out of that right rear because what's happening is you're just getting so much side bite on that right rear tire and that's kind of the problem that we've had lately with some of our cars when the racetrack goes slick our stuff is really really good but some of these guys have decided to try to make these places a little heavier they've got rain before the race to the point where the moisture is down four or five inches and our guys struggle. I mean, our, our stuff is definitely made for when it's tight. So that's some of the changes that I tell our guys to do, Brian. So what's that big race at 141? Is that the third weekend in June? Uh, yeah, that's coming up in a couple of weeks, I believe. Is it like the 12, 13 is something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chris asking for a friend. If the car is good through the corner but has no drive off in a metric sport mod, what do you recommend he do? Well... You know, on a metric sport mod, you're, you're really limited. You know, shock changes might definitely help, you know, um, those type of things. Um, those cars kind of tend to like rear percentage. Um, you know, the, the old adage of rear percentage just kind of, you know, you got to not go too far because that will affect it on corner entry. But if you can increase the rear percentage and he can keep it straight getting in, rear percentage will definitely get you off the corner. Um, you know, the other thing would be is, you know, I don't know what the legal adjustments are on the trailing arms, but I know like our stock cars, we got two different holes on our trailing arms so we can put some lead in the car if we need to. And that seems to work really well. Uh, helping the car. It doesn't seem to affect the car much getting in, but definitely helps the car getting off. So that would be something to tell him, Chris. Is it a metric, full metric chassis sport, like a Southern Sport Mod, or is it a... That's what I'm guessing. It's a metric Sport Mod, so I'm guessing it's like a Southern Sport Mod. Or just a metric stubbed Northern Sport Mod. Well, it could be too. Yeah, that would be a little bit different, Chris, if you got, if that's a, like, if it's a Southern Sport Mod where it's got the metric rear suspension like the stock cars, or if it's uh, uh, metric, metric stub stub Northern. Northern Sport Mod. There we go. Uh, well, then that changes the whole package. I mean, rear percentage definitely helps. Lead definitely helps. But at least it's adjustable, so you can adjust it. Um yeah, and shocks, those those two things would be what I would recommend. Um, Jeffrey says metric sport mod, add 50 pounds at transfer loop. Transmission loop? Transmission loop.
Yeah, we just got confused on the metric stub or if it was a northern sport mod or a southern sport mod. Well, we've got a few more times for some questions, guys. If you've got any more questions, uh, Chris says, thanks. I'll let him know. It's truly for a friend, LOL. I understand, Chris. No problem. I know those friends deals. You got to help out a buddy when you can. Or whatever. Two weeks again? What's the date of that? Uh, let's see. Two weeks from today would be, this is May, so... June 6th. Oh, hell, we'll have all kinds of racing in by June 6th. And like I said, the, 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 the 10-day forecast looked pretty impressive for the week coming up. Um, let's see here. Um, Chris, also, are you guys coming to the clash at Deer Creek? Chad, I know you are usually usually come for that. Yep. Are you Chad no, will be there for the Harris I think he's I think he's talking about the clash at Francis Creek. Oh, clash Francis Creek. Creek. Yeah, in June. Uh we're we're talking about it. We uh, we usually go. Uh we're not sure. It's kind of a goofy week, but one way or another we'll probably end up there probably race day only though. Uh, Derek, what does left side percentage do for you? I run around 52. Is there an advantage to more or less? 52%, um, I'm guessing, is probably without the driver. So that would put you at about 54% with the driver. That seems to be the kind of the go-to. More rear percentage will definitely, or more left side percentage, will definitely get the car off the corner a little bit better, but it, it tends to get the car a little free getting in because it takes side bite out of there. The more rear percentage, or, uh, the more left side percentage you have, the less side bite the car will have on corner entry. Yeah, correct meant 141. When I say the clash at the creek, I wasn't thinking that. We just talked yeah. about the race, so I don't know why I wasn't You thinking automatically about it. always think the Harris Clash at the yeah, Creek. Yeah, I just clicked, man. I was like, yeah, Deer Creek, Harris Clash at Deer Creek. And they kind of have the same words in them. Yeah. Only thing was is we were the first one to have the clash. Yeah. So... But yeah, June 6th will be our next event. Um, but anyway, we've got a couple more minutes here. If some guys got some more questions, we got a little bit of time. Um, Jim, is there any videos on the pull bar setup from Weirs? Are you talking the 9010 video for the 9010 mounts from today? That guy? <laughs> Are you talking videos on actual pull bar setups? Tell us what you want. The video, the media team is rocking and rolling. They're ready to go. Would they just need content? What do you want them to do? They got a list of stuff to work on, but we uh, we need your guys' input on what you want to see. So if you're talking about just a regular pull bar setup or if you're talking about that 90-10 setup, let me know. Uh, Steve, if there, if you had a choice between fuel and lead to gain rear percentage, which would you prefer? Um, lead is a constant; it doesn't move. So your center of gravity is is the same no matter what. Where the fuel will burn off and the center of gravity will change. Um, Rhonda says, "Congratulations on the 80th." 
And Jim says the number seven pick, but Billy sent me the big purple today. I had one from a used car with no instructions. So seven puck and big purple are a little bit different. The seven puck's going to have uh, more preload. So the seven puck closed can bar. I'm not sure if we have a video on that on the on the site or not, but that thing you're going to uh, grease all the pucks and you grease the inside of the can and then you preload it a quarter inch and then you'll run it one night and then you'll reset the preload after the first night, uh, usually a quarter to three eighths of an inch. The big puck is very simple. That's just simply an eighth inch of preload and that thing you don't have to grease it. You don't have to work on it. You don't have to do nothing. You just put that thing in the car and smash it and about... I'm not sure if you're IMCA, Jim, or if you're open car, but an IMCA car can run that bushing probably between 40 and 60 nights, depending on track conditions. So that's one of our longest lasting pull bars for sure. Um, Justin wants to know, he's going from a 3 8 racetrack to a quarter inch. What would be the first three changes you would make to an IMCA sport mod? Well, First thing, when I went there, I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I would go and run my quarter mile racetrack. Of course, you're going to need a different gear. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't change much on the car and then kind of see what the car actually tells you because the car is going to tell you what it needs. Um, you know, if it's too tight getting in, try a softer left front spring or put some trail in the car, those kind of things. Uh, but you'll find three eighths versus a quarter. Our cars, we don't change much setup at all, to be honest with you. I mean, we pretty much stagger a little more stagger. You might run more stagger on that quarter mile racetrack than you would. Uh, that's probably something I would probably do right off the bat. I would probably put a little more stagger in the car. Um, and then I work a lot with my right trailing arm. If a car seems like it's a little too tight, I raise the right trailing arm up a hole on the frame and get more steer in the car. And that's pretty much what I would do because, you, you know, it, the car's probably going to be a little tighter on that quarter mile racetrack. Just guessing, but, you know, it's hard to say. You know, if you're on a real fast high bank three eighths and a flat quarter, it's going to be quite a bit of difference. But overall, I would start with my basic setup and then adjust accordingly. Justin, thanks. First year for my wife transitioning to the class. So just curious. Awesome. Jim, that with soda, that your open motor, you're going to be a little harder on that. So probably more like 25 to 30 nights on that big puck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. All right. Well, another good show. Thank you guys for all chiming in on here. We appreciate you coming in and watching, and, and uh, um, we look forward to seeing you here in a couple of weeks. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody.